Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Not gonna be on here too long tonight. Feeling a little tired and um, don't have too much battery on here. But wanted to pop in and I, I saw something tragic happen in the news with, with a guy and took the life of his girlfriend or wife, I, I think. They say she wanted a divorce and he took her life. And I'll be honest with you, with stuff like that, you know, it's hard to tell. You can you can't really tell with a guy because in looking at the guy picture, I could tell he's like a soft thug. It's kind of like the guy to where if he wanted to be it's the type of guy if he wanted to be a pretty boy, he'll be a he could be a pretty boy. But in order to fit in and not be punked, he became a fake tough guy. And then when you, the, that's why I say the most dangerous being on earth is an insecure man. Because when you're a fake tough guy, you got to go all the way. You got to go all the way with your threats because that ain't really you. So you overcompensate to try to prove that you're a man of your word. Whereas like guys who actually tough, they really don't want to do any harm to anybody they're more so there for self-defense. It's like when you watch them Kung Fu movies and you see like Bruce Lee or the person who do all that karate, they kind of like, hey, uh, no, no, I, I, I don't want to do anything. Like, hey, hey, you know, please leave me alone. And then the guy keep balling, keep balling, and then he got the... And that's kind of how it is with guys. It's like, and I remember when I was, you know, fake tough, when I was a fake thug, and I remember talking to my sister about her boyfriend who was a real thug and used to love to fight, used to fight all the time. And she was like, Tony, I've never seen him lose a fight once. And then, and she was like, he's never once put hands on me. He's never once jumped bad at me. He's never once got physical with me. And that was such a lesson for me because I was like, man, a dude who really get it out there in the streets is not trying to do anything to harm her physically. But then her boyfriends who was soft in the streets, they would try to take it out on her. And I seen that happen all the time, live through it. And so I understand that, you know, that fragile masculinity. And so for a woman, you have to be very keen on these things. And in this day and age, you gotta pay closer attention and don't be afraid to get the male opinion of your brother your father if he's in your life if not a, a older male co-worker somebody that's not trying to sleep with you or even if he is trying to sleep with you uh, one thing a man is always going to do a man is always going to tell you the truth about what he sees in another man like don't be afraid to ask your pastor to to ask you know any man that you have access to don't be afraid. It could be your ex-boyfriend. It could be your baby daddy. Like, it's it's better than nothing. Of course, go to them last. Like, don't ask your ex-boyfriend or your baby daddy if you know other men. But always get male insight on the man you're dealing with. And the reason being is because men could see, men could tell. A man, even though he don't, he may not all the way have the gift of discernment, he still will be able to tell what type of dude this is because the way we act in our life, the way we act in the world is based on how we look. And based on how we look determines how the world treats us. So if a guy is six foot six and he is, you know, really dark skinned and he is really heavy set, the world is going to treat him different than a guy who is 5'10" and light skin and freight, you know, really petite, really slim. The world's gonna treat them differently because of the programming in the world. So this one guy is gonna be like, oh, he's big and scary. And this other guy's gonna be like, oh, he's small and soft. Where the big guy may actually be a teddy bear in the world and the small guy may actually be a little hornet, you know, just a little bumblebee that'll sting you. And so, but that is how the world judges us and treats us a certain way. So then it develops the man's personality. So a lot of times with men, you could read the men, 
men could read men. Men could read where a man is coming from and what man you could try, what man you could test, and what man you really don't want no smoke with. Men could tell that. So, but women cannot read that because you're not a man. Just like a woman can read a woman. And the only thing is, I notice women sometimes hate on women a little more than men hate on men. I've come to realize that. So it's a little different for a man asking a woman opinion about a woman because sometimes women could be a little too, you know, ruthless. But a man, because we don't have the cognitive skills that a woman possesses, a man typically is going to be too blunt and too real to come up with this extravagant, you know, explanation or reason to hate on this other man. He's just going to tell you what he sees. Not stay away from him. Stay away from him. And then some women, a woman who has dated a lot, dated around, if that's your sister, if that's your your friend, if that's your mom, if that's your aunt, they also can read men. You know, I, I was, I, I got a picture of this young lady and, and this guy that she's dealing with. And I showed it to my sister. I said, do you think they are fit? She said, absolutely not. He's a user. He's a user. She just, she just a, a warm body. She just somebody that he can get stuff from. And I already knew that. I said that too. But I just wanted to see because I know my, my sister had dated men like that, that looked like that. And that's how they were. And so I wanted to see if she could pick up on that. So to women, what you have to do you got to get outside feedback on this man. The other thing what you have to realize is that a man who is capable of taking your life, you're going to see signs. You're going to see some signs and it may be very subtle, but it, it, it's going to be like some jealousy. It's going to be some insecurity. It's going to be some, some control or it's going to be super fake. Like, it's going to be like he bites his tongue all the time. You curse him out and he's like, oh, stop doing that, honey. That man is equally as dangerous as the man who is controlling. Because no man gets disrespected without responding in some type of way. So when a man is like overly nice and overly charming and just so sweet and you just like, I could do anything to him. I curse him out. I cancel dates. I don't call and he's still a gentleman. That man will kill you. He will take you out of this out of this world. You hear me? He, he will send you to meet the Lord. Listen to what I'm telling you. So you more so better with an authentic man. And what I mean by this is this is a man who he expresses when he's upset. You know when he's upset. But it's his feelings are hurt. And he's unhappy with you and he expresses that but it's not in a it's not in an aggressive or violent manner he's not cursing you out he's more so like the, what you want to see from a man is more so like you know i i just really do not like that and i need to talk to you you know i really need to talk to you because I just, I can't live like this. I don't operate like this. So it's like, we just, we need to hash this out. And I'm going to tell you like this right here. Like, I love you and everything, but I refuse to be with a woman that's going to emasculate me. That's going to talk down to me and it's going to treat me like that. Like, if that's what you are and that's where you're at. And if you have not healed and that's how you're going to talk to me, this could be the last conversation we ever have. So I'm letting you know right here and right now. Now he's direct. You already emotional. That's why you emasculated him in the first place because you did not heal properly. So that may make you cry, but he didn't make you cry. Your pain made you cry. Your broken heart from your past made you cry. Your, you feel stupid now because you got a good man and you cussing him out and talking down to him for no good reason when he really didn't do nothing that bad. And so that's what made you cry. But the man who... You emasculate him or you curse him out or you cheat on him or you steal from him or you lie on him or you tell all his business to somebody and it comes back to him. And he's like, 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really upset, but you know, it's all right. It's all right. It's okay. I get it. Uh, you know, I'm over it. It's, it's just okay. Like, forget it. Like, I'm not even worried about it. It's cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. The other man who goes off the handle and he throwing stuff or he throwing you and he cussing you out. You been not ever in your life. You been not ever. That man right there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You hear what I'm telling you? Listen to me. You want a man who is authentic, who is pure, who is direct, a man who he's not trying to sweep stuff under the rug. He going to call a town hall meeting. It's finna be a board meeting and he going to tell you how he feel. And it's going to be direct. It's going to be real. It's going to be raw. But it's going to be from a place of love because he wants to be productive and he wants y'all to work out. The man that just shut down and he continued to be a sweetheart, even though you know you did him wrong, you better watch out. You got to sleep like this. The man who goes all the way off, flying off the handle, scare you to death, you better watch out. And listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me now. Y'all don't like to listen to this. Y'all don't like to hear this. Y'all do not like to hear this. Listen. Listen, all you get this man is one chance. All you give him is one chance. Don't let a man that is aggressive, that is aggressive with you, don't, you can't afford a second chance. Because that second chance could cost you everything, could cost you your life. You give him one chance, and then you go on about your business. You go on about your business. When he does something with intent to harm, go on about your business. I'm telling you now. Now, the man that you are emasculating and he keeping it cool, calm, and collected and he being a sweetheart, even though you dogging him out, leave him too. You need to leave him. As soon as you rip a man privates off with your words or with your actions, and he don't say or do nothing. And he just kind of like, he's sweeping under the rug. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. Because he plotting your demise. It's time for you to go because you don't love him and respect him. That's why you talking to him like that because you don't love him and respect him. So you need to go on about your business. You need to go on about your business and get you a man that you can love and respect. A man that you're going to feel in your heart and your spirit that you need to treat right, do right, and talk to with some respect. If you talking to this man like the limp between your toes, like, you know, redhead stepchild, you talking to this man like he's Cinderella, then, and, and you the evil stepmama, then you need to go on about your business. You need to go on about your business because that's not your husband. That's not your husband. The, the, the man in him don't bring out the woman in you. Y'all ain't a fit. You not healed. You used to being with thugs. You used to a man going upside your head. You used to a man cussing you out. Now you got this man who a little bit more quiet and reserved and introverted. And now you want to drag him by the scroll. Go on about your business. Because cause you're going to pay a, a grave price. A mighty, mighty price. You hear me? So listen to me now. Recognize the signs. Now, I, I just throwed out some signs. That ain't all the signs. Now, don't just say, well, oh, Tony ain't say this. Well, Tony ain't say this. Well, Tony ain't say this. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, are you, are you on drug? Are you on drug? Okay. If, if you are, you need to go to Narcotics Anonymous or you need to go to Alcoholic Anonymous. All right. If you're on drug, if you're not on drugs, then guess what? Your intuition is your best friend. Your intuition is so keen, so sharp. It is so amazing. When you sense fear in your heart and this man make the hair on the back of your neck, stand up, run. Don't let that go from the hair on the back of your neck standing up to the hair down there standing up. And you let it turn you on. Oh, oh my. Oh, wow. That's how you talk. Oh, man. I got a real man. Mm. Ooh, so you ain't scared of me, huh? Mm, I love when you yell at me. 
hit me again. And see, some of y'all crazy enough to be like, slap crazy. I done went through that. I done lived through that. The well, people crazy. Like, want to be, just want somebody to, Conor McGregor. It's like, come on, nah. That ain't love. That ain't no relationship. But some, some of y'all done went through so much that that's what love is to you. Screaming, yelling, fussing, fighting, getting punched in the eye. The way you got to go to work and lie, talk about you fell down the stairs and, and hit your eye, hit your nose, scratch your face. That scratch on you. you oh, your you, you cat, your you cat scratch. Cat wasn't even up there. Cat don't even wrap around nobody's neck. That, that look like fingerprints. Your, 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 that look like imprint of a hand. Oh man, big hand. Your, your co-workers know what that is. That's, that's four fingers. Cat ain't got no fingers. They, they know what that is. Come on now, it's time for you to leave. It's time for you to leave. Because I'm telling you now, I'm telling you, you cannot play with this. You can't play with this. Cause listen, you'll be you'll be with the Lord. And it's happening over and over. And it's sad. You cannot let these women, every nine seconds, a woman go goes through that right there. Every nine seconds. You can't let these women who are this is happening to be in vain. You got to wake up and realize that you don't want this to be you. And this is a very serious topic now. It's a very serious topic. And I know sometimes when, when you're not in it, you can't really feel it. Sometimes when you ain't in it, you know, just talking about it. You know, I heard women joking about it. Girl, he kicked my behind. And they just talking about it like they just, just another day in the park. Girl, he, woo, girl, when I tell you he put a whooping on me. <sighs> girl, I thought that man was Mike Tyson. And it's like, when you're not in it no more, or it done happened and the pain went away, you kind of, you talk about it. But listen, that's life and death. So when you dealing with this man, and you kind of like, uh, you're a little scared, you're a little worried, you wondering what's going on with this guy. Remember, the hair on the back of your neck standing up. You got to go. You got to go. Trust me now. Listen to me now. Don't take this as no game. Don't play with it. Oh, and this is what I was going to say. When I was going to tell you, y'all don't want to hit it. One time. He get aggressive. He show some signs like he might be Ted Bundy's nephew. He show some signs he might be Hannibal Lecter's nephew. He, you, you realize he's some kin to Mike Tyson? And he got a right hook, left uppercut, whatever. Once you sense that, it got to go. Got, got to go. You hear me? He punched the wall too hard. Got to go. Because next, that's going to be your head. And if he hits you right here, you're going to finito, flat line. You hear me? And if and if and I'm gonna tell you this right here. A lot of people hollering about old Second Amendment. Old Second Amendment, listen. The first amendment, you got to walk the right to walk away. Okay, Second Amendment is the right to have a gun, right to buy a gun. Listen, if you know your man is a little cuckoo for cocoa puffs, and he holler about bringing a gun and how got to go. Got to go. Listen, absolutely not. There ain't no gun in here. Listen, ain't no gun in here. If your man ain't all the way there and, and you just decide you're going to stay because you got a football team worth of kids with them and you decide you're just going to stay, listen, no gun in no house, no knives in the house. Y'all couldn't stay with butter knives. Don't even have no steak knife. You butter knives you couldn't stay with. Listen to what I'm telling you now. This is very serious. Listen to what I'm telling you. Cause see y'all like to play around y'all like to play around and and these men right here these, these crazy men today they playing for keeps these men crazy and i'm gonna tell you what i do now if i was in power and these men take their woman life he going to the torture chamber we plucking one hair at a time then we pluck it we peeling off one nail at a time and you know what they don't they don't care the 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 the, the law they do not care about you. They don't care nothing about no woman. 
I saw a story of the lady who she keep calling the law, calling the law, calling the law, because the man keep threatening to kill. He keep coming to her house, and they're like, listen, until he actually lay hands on you, ain't nothing we could do. What? Ain't nothing y'all could do. Like, with the restraining order? Y'all ain't heard of that? Like, restraining order? Like, what y'all mean? Y'all can't, ain't threatening a crime? No. This ain't even crime no more. They say, if he gonna take you out, we'll be happy for you to go, because we trying to get rid of y'all anyway. They, 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 they trying to get rid of, especially the black woman. They don't care nothing about you. The law don't care nothing about you. You got to defend. You got to defend for yourself first. You see this man crazy. The, the law don't care nothing about you. He got to now about kill you. And then just what I read about the man, he even took the young lady life, and they gonna give him a hundred thousand dollar bond. It's like if this man just shot this woman to death, how you gonna give him a, a bond? Cause he could get out and then flee through the border. He could get out and and and, and go in hiding and, and never have to pay pay the price. Talking about bond, cause y'all know what a bond is, right? It's ten percent of that price. So when they say hundred thousand dollar bond, they don't got to pay a hundred thousand. You got to pay ten thousand. His cousin just got the drop from SBA fraud and SBA. His cousin got that ten k. His homeboys put together five of them, put two k in, and, and he out. Now he on the run. Now he in witness protection. Now he hiding out somewhere. And now don't even got to pay the price for what he did to the young lady. That showed me right there, them people don't care. They saying, we don't have the space to, to house a murderer who killed a black woman because we don't care about them. I bet if he killed another color woman, then he wouldn't have no bond. They'll be ready to hang him from a tree outside. But because he killed one of his own, black one, oh, you get out. Your family will come up with 10 grand? Go ahead. Go on about your business. Oh, you going to run? All right, good. That'll make some good, that'll make a good headline for us. Another ape on the loose. Another another coon on the loose. Go ahead. Run for the border. We'll, we'll have some good news about you. And then that gives some good headlines. And then we get to hunt you down and, and slaughter you now. Because now you aren't in danger. So now we get to come out there and just do target practice with you. It's all a setup. So they don't care nothing about that, man. So you have to listen to me. That's why you got to take care of yourself. Listen. Listen to me. I keep trying to say this now. That's why. Because I never, I really need you to get this in here. One chance. When this man show you that he crazy. And them hairs on the back of your neck down. Or leave. Ain't no, oh, well, what if he could change? Well, you change for your, look, he's not me. You see what I'm sitting here doing? I'm talking to you. He's not me. Don't, don't, don't try to compare him to me. Don't try to compare him to nobody you see giving advice online. That's, he ain't us. All right? That's your crazy man that you need to get far away from. Don't be trying to compare him. Oh, well, you change for your wife. Listen. He not me and you not my wife. You is you and he is him. He don't love you. He don't care for you. And he got plans for you. And it ain't no white dress in a white picket fence house on a hill. He got other plans for you. So listen, don't let what these other women have gone through and what these women going through be you. Live for them. So that they didn't leave in vain. And you got to recognize when this man show you he crazy, Lee, it's too many men in the world. Oh, it ain't that many men in the world. It ain't that many good men. Listen, well, if it ain't a man out there for you, you could do bad by yourself. All right? You could do better by yourself. You hear me? So go on about your business because your life too precious. And I'm going to tell you, when you're dealing with a grown boy, Grown boys act first and think later. A grown boy would do something, commit the act, and don't even fully process what he just did until after it's done. I looked at a man mugshot. He wasn't even remorseful. He's so soft and so cotton booted. He's so soft that I could tell in the mugshot, he think what he did to that young lady gave him street cred. He really think he menace to society right now. Boys in the hood, juice. He really think he from the the rough streets of Compton for taking that young lady life. 
He that soft booty. And that's why I hope they put him in general population. So them men just could. So big bubble them just could. Ugh. That's what I hope they do to him. Because that's what he. It, it, it's some sorry. Lost. Broken. Confused men. And listen. Do not be his target. Do not be his punching bag. Do not be his, his test dummy. Do not be none of that. When you recognize this and see, you know it, you know it. And see, that is why the female intuition is so strong. See, the male intuition is uh, it's good, but it ain't at the heightened sense of a woman's intuition. So you have to understand that, that when you feel that tingle in your bones, that is your alarm. That's your defense mechanism. God intentionally wired that in you to protect you from these villainous men, from men who got the wrong blood coursing through their veins and that you are not the fit for them. Your intuition is an alarm system that goes off that says, wrong man, wrong man, wrong man. Not your man, not your man, not your man. See, it's another woman that got a different type of blood coursing through her veins. And she come in, she she got a whip on. The same man that's Conor McGregor with you, he'll be a little puppy with another woman. With, with the woman that's for him, he'll be eating his fingernails. And you'll be like, wow, he was real tough over here. He was bowing up over here. He was, wow. But then now he with her, he act like a little church boy. Yeah, because that's the woman that God put in her what he what she need to train his butt. You not his wife. You was finna be his test dummy. And that's what you got to realize and understand because if you, because see, this, this is what you got to understand. When you stay with a grown boy, you fueling him, you feeding him, you you telling him that he the man, you the man, you control me, you own me, I'm yours. If you can't have me, can't nobody have me. Your presence is reinforcing his insecurities. Your presence is fueling and feeding his ignorance and his immaturity and his weakness. So when you recognize this, you got to go and you cannot let your mama or your auntie or your girlfriend, your homegirl, your mentor who has survived at the hands of a toxic man tell you, oh, just stay, just work it out. It'll be all right. That's just how men are. Yeah, you're going to get some nicks and knocks and you're going to get some bumps and bruises, but that's relationships. I bet you Mary had a black eye after Joseph found out she was carrying Jesus and, and Joseph hadn't even stuck nothing in her yet. How, you mean to tell me you really think back in those days we couldn't even vote in America? What you think the women was like back then? Girl, I'm trying to tell you, I bet Joseph mopped the flow with Mary. And so now, girl, we lucky that we just get slapped in the face or punch or he put a gun to your head like he gonna do something with it. Girl, he ain't going to do nothing with that. Trust me, because if he wanted to do that, he would already did it. That's the terrible advice that women give women today. That is the terrible advice that women give women today. And see, men, yeah, it sounds like it's easy. I know we make it sound easy when we say just leave. But the reason why men, the reason why your homeboy told you that, the reason why your daddy tell you that, the reason why your brother tell you that, the reason why I'm telling you that is because we all men. And we all know that every man has a bit of irrationalness in him. And when he shows that to you, that means that you and him are not a mix. And when he shows that to you, every man knows that it just take a blank of an eye and he could do something that he can never reverse. That he will do something that he can never reverse and it can cost you your life. Every man knows that. And that's why men tell you, men who love you, men who care for you, men who working for the Lord. That's why we tell you, leave immediately leave if you got to be alone okay be lonely that's why they call the game uno because it's one you could you're supposed to play by yourself 
because when you put the color down, the next color, okay, it's gonna stay reverse. It's going right back, it reverse right back to you. So if you lonely, all right, play Uno. That cause Uno mean one, play by yourself, okay? Watch your television, watch your vlogs, all right? Work on your business, just be lonely. If you that lonely, you got to cry, okay, cry, cry, scream. You got to beat up your pillow, beat up your pillow. You get to do what you got to do. You got to talk to yourself, talk to yourself, do what you got to do, be lonely then. Be lonely, it's better to be lonely than to be dead. Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm telling you now. I'm, I, if you got to leave the night, get up and leave the night. When he go to snoring, all right, all right. Get your pair of underwears for tomorrow. A couple pair of underwears for tomorrow. Get some blue jeans because you can wear blue jeans several days in a row. And and go on about your business. Tiptoe right on out the house. Go on to your mama house. Go on to your go to your neighbor house. Stay over there for a few days. They'll let you stay in their guest room. They'll let you sleep in the basement. Just tell them you're in an abusive relationship. You got to get free. You got to figure out a plan. Come right on in. Everybody looking to do a good deed right now. In this day and age, with the world looking like it's cursed, we looking like the next Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord then then sent this plague on us, then 19 on us. It's somewhere, somewhere. It's Moses talking to a king somewhere, and the king then don't want to hear God, so God then let this 19 come out here and just spread through the land. And so we going through right now. So people trying to get right with the Lord. You go to anybody's house. Now you go to a stranger's house. They'll let you come right on in there. Yeah, just go over there in the guest room. Just stay right. You need some milk and cookies. Whatever you need. Okay, we got you. God got a hedge of protection around you. But you got to get up and you got to walk. See, God ain't going to take your leg and just start bending it to make you walk. You got to get up and you got to leave. The, the next free moment you get, he go to work. Boom. He go to sleep. Boom. You got to go. You got to go because your life on the line. Your life on the line. And listen, it just take mm, it just take a, a, a moment. Just one moment. Don't play with them. Don't play with them. Because the longer you stay, the worse it get. See, what it is, the longer you stay, it's like he's he's being wound up. Like you winding them up, like a jack in the box. The longer you stay. Every day you stay, you you turn, you doing another wine. And then eventually, when you let go, he going poof, he gonna explode. But see, picture it like this. Picture you just got one wine. Picture you got 30 wines versus for one month versus having a wine for three years, for five years. Picture the jack in the box, but a human version, not the actually a little box. When you just wine it a little bit, it ain't going to do nothing. It might not even open. But when if you've been winding this man up for three years, two years, Five years, seven years, ten years, fourteen years, twenty years. When you when you say okay, I done, I'm done, I'm leaving. He finna explode. He finna explode. So that's why you got to recognize it as early as possible and get out of dodge. Hey, this is Tony Gas. I said I was gonna be on here. I really planned to be on here ten minutes. I was ready to go to sleep and um, got on here and. The Lord say, keep on talking. Somebody, somebody need to hear it. And I'm going to tell you, like, look, with these right here, you know, it's so sad out there. And I, I can't really be, you know, I, 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 don't, I, you know, I don't want to get on here and cry and, you know, or anything like that. And, and I don't mean to be insensitive when I see something on the news or somewhere and I come and talk about it because some of their family members might follow me. And God bless y'all, love y'all, pray for praying for you. But I got to get right on it and I got to talk about it and I got to be real on it because somebody else's life on the line. So just like it happened to this person, this young lady, who I don't even know, don't know their name, don't know what state they live in, because I just see this stuff on the news coming up. It could be some one of y'all that is getting ready to happen to. And if you hear this message and you got the opportunity to lead this aggressive, abusive toxic man that you keep talking about you're going to give him another chance and you waiting on God to change him. No, leave. Let God deal with him when you gone a hundred miles away. Let God deal with him then. And then when God change him, let God change him for him, not change him for you. You hear me? Go on about your business. Hey, this is Tony Gasson. God bless you. God bless you. Praying for you. If you need some help, you need somebody to talk to, go to mymentor.life. Mymentor.life. Got a coach for you. Trying to get my finger to go straight up under there. All right, we got it. My mentor dot like on there. How you a coach? It got coaches for all budgets, as low as twenty five dollars an hour. 
if, if you can't sacrifice twenty five dollars an hour to save your life or change your life, may God be with you. May God be with you. But but the night we all got something going on. The night everybody on here need to be hiring them a, a session with a life coach, change their life. Uh, people say, "Oh, I ain't got a, I ain't got the money for no session." If you ain't, if you ain't got the if you ain't got the money for no session, you ain't got the money to sacrifice for your mental health, for your emotional health. You always gonna be in the mud. You always gonna be in the mud. If I gotta eat beans, a eighty nine cent cup of beans, so that I can invest in me to change my situation, to unlock my mind, to go to the net. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. But what you eat not, you eat the whole value meal. You eat the whole meal, six dollars every day. So six times seven, well, do the math. That was your session right there. Right there, you could have been eating, you could have bought you a bag of rice and a bag of beans if you had to. But I'm saying this not just about coaching, but I'm saying this about the mentality of you got to do what you got to do to get out of that situation. A lot of people don't want to be uncomfortable. Oh, I don't want to change jobs. Your life on the line. Oh, I don't, I don't, want, to, uh, I don't want to move. I don't want to break my lease. I don't want my credit to be messed. You want to be dead? Do you want to be dead? You rather bad credit or a funeral? What do, what what is what are we comparing here? You rather ask for a transfer on your job or a funeral? This yeah, it's this serious. When you with a toxic, controlling, abusive man, it's that serious. You this close to your life being gone because it take one it take one bad decision on his behalf and you finito. Understand what I'm telling you? Now this very real. Turn on your news. Go on one of these gossip blog sites. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Hey, got to go. God bless. I, I, I'll be on these right here. I'm serious about these, but I, I, I can give you an hour, but I ain't, I ain't got it in me tonight. God bless you. We'll talk.